Hello, 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 everyone. I hope you're all doing absolutely fabulous. Today, we're going to paint this super pretty purple mandala. And this is a very easy project, and it's perfect for beginners. Here's my recipe. You can pause here to gather what you need, or just refer to the list in the description area below this video. So get all your goodies together, and let's go make the magic happen as we paint with a passion. I'm painting on a six inch wood disc, and I've primed and painted it with Lilac Meadow. Using a round stencil, Let's begin by adding markers for our design using white chalk. And if you don't have chalk, just use a pencil and make sure to go light on the pressure. First, find and mark your center and then trace all of the straight lines. Now trace the two inner circles and then skip a row, and then trace the last circle that fits on your wood disc. Now, you can use any colors you want, and this design will work on all kinds of things, like ornaments, coasters, or even serving platters. Now, using a straight edge, let's connect all of the straight lines through the center. If you don't own a stencil, I highly recommend investing in a set. They are so handy and they save you a lot of time finding the center or making circles and lines. Um, you can always use a compass and a ruler or you could even trace around circular objects. Now let's finish drawing on our design. Now I've sped the video up a little bit so just feel free to pause the video as needed. Using black and a super skinny fine line and brush, let's paint on our Mandela design. The super skinny fine line and brushes that I'm using are custom made. And I make these because I've never found a store-bought fine lining brush that's skinny enough. And I've included a link in the description area if you'd like to watch my video and learn how to create your own. I paint a lot like I'm holding a pencil, and I find I have much more control if I rest the side of my hand on a flat surface. Now, if your space is limited and you don't have a flat surface area to rest your hand on, try resting the side of your hand on the back of your other hand.
Another good tip I have to share is that I like to spin my piece clockwise so that the wet paint doesn't pass under my hand. Um, if you're left-handed, you'll want to spin it counterclockwise. You can see here how the curved skinny brush makes painting fine line circles so much easier. And to make your brush curved, just leave it bristle side down in the water overnight. All right, let's erase all of the lines inside of our triangles. And now let's add a pattern inside the triangles. I'm going with a crosshatch pattern, but if you want to switch it up, you can uh, get some other pattern ideas by checking out my Autumn Leaf or my Marble Mandela tutorials. Okay, let's make sure the paint is dry and then let's use a straight edge to add lines to create triangles around the outer edge of our mandala. And now, uh, let's paint in those triangles. 
And for this, I recommend an angled brush. And now let's add some dots using one of our larger dotting tools. Um, just a note, I ended up making the outer edge dots larger while I was off camera. If you'd like to see a video on how to make a dotting tool size guide, uh, just check out my video. It's included in the description below this video. Let's make sure our dots are completely dry and then let's erase all of the chalk marks. And actually, I let all of my dots dry overnight. So, originally, I planned to keep this Mandela just two colors and add a little sparkle. But I decided I wanted another color, so I asked my man, what he thought and he said I needed to add some purple. So let's add some purple. Turns out my man was right. Thank you, honey. Using a dotting tool that's one or two sizes smaller, let's add some top dots to the dots that we put around the flower. Let's also add some purple to the teardrops using our dotting tools and the dot dragging method. What you want to do is add a dot of paint at the top and then add another dot on top of that dot and then use the smallest tool you have to drag and pull the paint into place. For a complete instruction on this method, check out my flower power tutorial or my Mandela Duo tutorial both of these videos give you really good in-depth dot dragging instruction with really good close-ups. All right. It's my favorite part. Let's add some sparkles. I'm using Folk Art Extreme Glitter for this. And if you really want it to sparkle, 
Um, you're going to want to paint it over black paint. Now since I'm going to use it to dot as well as paint some of it on, I'm going to want to add a second coat to the flower um, so that it's the same thickness or the same sparkle intensity as the dots. If sparkles aren't your thing, you can just skip this. Um, or maybe you could add a center dot to the flower. You could use metallic or maybe use the lightest color that you've um, used for your base. Whatever you choose, it's gonna look gorgeous. Um, this paint is so amazing. And um, I'm not promoting this product, but I just wanna share it with you and I hope you love it too. It goes on really milky, but it dries fast. And as you continue to paint, you can literally watch it change as it dries. You know how you always do something a certain way, but then for some reason you don't do it that way? Well, I didn't varnish before I started with the fine lining and adding dots. So, as a result, the paint didn't want to glide on as smoothly as it would have had I varnished first. So, what I'm going to do is add a coat of matte varnish and then do a little touch-up. And now for the final varnish. And for this, I'm going with a satin finish. Look at this amazing sparkle. Our Mandela is absolutely gorgeous. Thank you all for joining me today, and a warm welcome to all of my newest subscribers. I hope you enjoyed this video, and I look forward to seeing you next time to paint with a passion. Please remember to like, share, and subscribe if you haven't already. I wish you peace, love, and happiness now and always. Bye!